Hello and welcome to the episode 361 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. A concert that made the Beatles in Liverpool, an article that built their reputation with serious music critics, and Paul McCartney trying to defend Magical Mystery Tour after its debacle, are the main stories of today's episode. The 27th of December 1960 was quite an important evening for the Beatles. The band, still featuring Pete Best on drums and Chaz Newby on bass, performed at the Little On Town Hall in Liverpool. According to Beatles historian Mark Lewison, this concert was the turning point of the Beatles' career. The engagement had come through thanks to Bob Wooler, an associate of manager Alan Williams, who convinced local promoter Brian Kelly to have the Beatles on the stage with another three local bands. Kelly, still remembering how the band went on tour in Scotland to back Johnny Gentle without even bothering to cancel a previous engagement with him – see episode 138 for more information on that – only agreed as a special favour to Wooler. The event was advertised through posters, all displaying the announcement, direct from Hamburg, the sensational Beatles. Since the local patrons had never seen or heard about the band, the Beatles had performed in the area only for an audition in May 1960, when they were called the Silver Beatles, everyone assumed the band was German. When Paul McCartney opened with his rendition of Little Richard's Long Tall Sally, the crowd spontaneously amassed towards the stage. Throughout the evening, the teenage audience was mesmerized and frenzied by the powerful performance of the band. The Beatles themselves were allegedly bewildered by the scene in front of them, the very beginning of what would eventually become Beatlemania. In any instance, Brian Kelly rushed to book the band for 36 evenings from January to March 1961, before any other promoter could beat him to it. With one concert, the Beatles became a sensation all over Liverpool. 1961, on this night, the Beatles, now a quartet with Paul McCartney on bass, performed at the Beatles' Christmas party an event organized at the Cavern Club in Liverpool, sharing the bill with Jerry and the Pacemakers and King Size Taylor and the Dominoes. On the 27th of December 1962, the single Love Me Do, with P.S. I Love You as its B-side, reached its peak position at number 17 of the record retailer sale chart. Given the odd progression of the single in the chart, with a couple of strange ups and downs, there was a strong suspicion that Beatles manager Brian Epstein had helped the single's performance by buying some 10,000 copies between October and December 1962. The allegations were naturally strongly denied by Epstein himself and have never been proved. Anyhow, in Hamburg, West Germany, the Beatles performed another night at the Star Club. By now, they had settled into their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums. 1963. In today's pages of the Times newspaper, music critic William Mann wrote an article called What Songs the Beatles Sang, praising the harmony of their songs and, famously, their pan-diatonic clusters and their aeolian cadences. Naturally, the Beatles had no clue what all this meant, but this was another turning point in the history of the band. From this day onwards, serious music critics started to give proper due to the Beatles' pop offerings. In other news, in the evening, the Beatles' Christmas show had the third night of its run at the Astoria Cinema in London. Let me tell you once again that you can support my music content production, help this community grow, and enjoy more and better stories in the future. How? Well, find that out by visiting www.simonmas.com support. There's a lot you can do, and most of the things just need a couple of minutes of your time, 
nothing more. Thank you for being fab. Let's close the episode with the 27th of December 1967. In the evening, Paul McCartney appeared on Ready Fusion's The Frost program, aired between 10.30 and 11.15 pm. The show, taped in front of live audience between 6 and 7 pm, featured Paul for its entire first half. Introduced by David Frost as the man most responsible for Magical Mystery Tour, Paul tried to defend the film, premiered on BBC One the previous evening and massacred by critics and public alike. See yesterday's episode for more info on that. Hunter Davis, the Beatles' official biographer at the time, said that it was the first time in memory that any artist felt obliged to make a public apology for his work. Tomorrow we'll have another short and sweet episode. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.